Welcome back to Grim Art of Cooking. This is all part of our curing meat series that we've been doing around here since I said we cure most all of our own homemade meats. Today we're going to go over how to cure and make your own homemade corned beef brisket. We have a full brisket here. It breaks down into two pieces, two parts of the brisket or two different areas. I'll go over that when we start into the trimming area. We have all of our salts, sugar, spices, and everything else for when we start doing our brine and we'll go into that in detail. So if you'll bear with me, we'll get set up here and we'll show you how we trim this down and get ready to go. All right, next we're gonna, after we've trimmed, and I'll show you the trimming after when we're ready to start injecting and priming it up here, we're gonna start our brine. So with our brine, I'm gonna heat up water and slowly bring it up to a boil. What we're gonna add is, and that's just to get everything, all the salts and sugars and everything else to dissolve. So I'm gonna add a cup and a half of kosher salt and I'll give it a nice couple stirs here just to start getting it to absorb in and to make sure it doesn't clump and build up on the bottom now that I don't feel it dragging on the bottom anymore we'll add our next we'll add a half cup of sugar and do the same. Now we have the cup, half cup of sugar. I have three tablespoons of number one curing salt. Number one is usually used for doing wet ingredients, brine. Number two is for doing dry cures, like we did for when we made our homemade bacon. There, as you can see, it's starting to take it in. It's starting to clear up a little bit. Now we'll add, all this is, is commercial made pickling spice. So instead of making my own, it's just as cheap for me to buy the already pre-mixed commercial stuff. We'll add it in. Now for measurement of the pickling spice, believe it or not, it's one of my palms. That's all I use to measure it up by. So when I get enough to cover the main central part of my palm, that's enough pickling spice for me to add. I have about three and a half, four tablespoons crushed garlic. And I have one onion. Now I've cut it and I'll break it into pretty much the ringlets or half ringlets. So I slice it down. Just breaking it up so it's all those little ringlets in there. You can see it's getting clearer and clearer, which means it's taking in all those salts and sugars into the liquid. There we go. Now we have everything in there. All I want to do is just make sure I can get this up. The heat is to help make it absorb into the liquid. It will also soften up the garlic and the onions a little bit. And then once this is totally absolved up, I'll add some cold water to it help bring the temperature down so it doesn't cook the meat when I put it in. And we're just about there. So we'll finish this off and then we'll show you setting it up for getting it bagged up and ready to be put away to be cured. Back in a moment. All right, when trimming your brisket, you're gonna take a good share of the back, the fat off the top of it off of it here. You're gonna take the fat off of the other ends. And then there's some areas that have some thicker, deeper areas, and they have tallow into them too. 
Now, I'll save some of the fat, I'll save the tallow. I use those for some other things like making sausage, render it down for some beef grease for actually curing like cast iron and stuff like that. Works for multiple different things. Beef brisket kind of breaks into two pieces. You have the flat down on this side over here, and you have the point over here. You can tell this comes out to more of a point, just like the name says, the flat. This is more lean down here. This is more fatty up in this end. So depending on how you want to use it, what you want to cook it for, it'll do fine either way. So for when we trim it, we'll start, I'll start right here in the middle area. Just make a nice incision and just kind of follow along the line of it. Now I'll leave some of it because you're going to want it for when you're cooking later on. It'll add flavor down and moisture, help keep your meat juicy. Doesn't have to be perfect. Unless you are a perfectionist, then go ahead. You don't want to waste all the meat off of it either. So all it does is it comes off nice strips like that. Take it off for those areas. Same way, up in this area here. This is mostly all tallow. It's nice and firm compared to this being soft. So what I'll do is change over here because I want to do like a nice incision into it. It's kind of triangle shaped. And we'll just kind of peel it out. We'll do this on and we'll do this around the whole thing. We'll get it trimmed up. When I get it trimmed up, we'll split it down into thirds for putting our cure in. We'll inject it with our cure. I'll show you how to do the cure and we'll bag it up and show you how we set it up for how it go and cure. All right, I've trimmed it down as far as I really want it right now. As you can see, when I took out the wedge, triangle shaped piece of beef tallow here, you can physically see where the two sections of meat kind of meet and go together for the point to the flat. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and flip this over because I trimmed this side down too. It also had a big section in there also I trimmed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this into my thirds. The reason I cut it into thirds, one, later on it's easier to just package up that way. So I'll have a section here of my point. I'll have a middle section to use for whatever I want to have some fatty to it. And then I'll have my flat. Once they're broke down like that, because these are larger pieces of meat, I go ahead and inject the brine down into it. This way I know I get full penetration for the brine to cure all the way in. I don't have undone uncured meat in the middle of it. That way it has the flavor all the way through it. Got a squirter there. The center ends go at an angle. That way you can kind of get in there a little better. There we go. Get it all injected up. Take my bag. The bags I use for my curing, I order online because I can't find them in any stores. These are 13 by 18 and they're a four mil thick. That way they hold up longer and can handle the weight of what I put in here. Put 
Pull it up. Open it up some. Now the brine we made, this is just two quarts. Feel free to make a big mess if you want, like I did. Or you can ask for assistance if you really think you can need it, but I think I'm good for now. Now that's two quarts, which means it's really salty. So we'll go ahead and add more to it, to where it's totally covering and immersing the meat. Burp it down, seal it, and then we'll hide it in the back corner of a refrigerator. I have a refrigerator set aside just for my meat. And this will sit for two weeks. So when it's done, we'll pull it out, we'll drain it, we'll rinse it, and we'll show you what it looks like when it's completely done. See you in two weeks. Welcome back, it's been a long two weeks and here we have one section of the finish. This is part of the flat. The other two sections have been bagged up, vacuum sealed or in the freezer right now. This is gonna be dinner tonight. So as you can see, it's got that nice pink hue to it. It'll turn a light darker as we cook it down and everything else when it's time to finish this off until we cook it. Today we're gonna to slow cook it so it tightens up really nice and gets a good color to it. When it's time to slice it, as you can see the green goes this way. We'll slice it across the grain, make it a lot easier to eat, less pieces between your teeth then. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of the bag and maybe we'll get a snapshot or two. I know we have some shots of corned beef on our side already. So there's the finished product and what it looks like and we'll talk to you later.